Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna. For those of you who are new here, welcome. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you my completed coloring pages for May 2021. And if that is of interest to you, please stay tuned. Alright, so before we even get started, it is going to be a chatty video. So uh, pause the video, get a snack, get comfortable, maybe uh, just throw me in the background and uh, color or journal or just do something fun and creative, relax with me because I'm feeling a little chatty. Plus, I also actually have a lot to say. I mean, not like bad, but I just I have a lot to say. <laughs> okay, so I am not a coloring book channel. It's one of my recently found or recently rediscovered uh, creative hobbies, and I have been enjoying it since January of this year. So relatively new to just knowing that color tube even existed. And color tube is just basically the coloring book community here on YouTube. I have been doing videos though since 2018 by way of planners and more recently of journals. So it's not a coloring book channel, it's not a planner channel, it's not a journal channel for me. It's just really a creative journey channel. <laughs> and I say that because like videos that I see in booktube, so the book reading community, um, I know a lot of people in the coloring book community uh, always start the video with, oh, I only did this amount of pages. I don't know how many pages that I did. It's not something that I'm tracking, but then just like in my journals and in my work planner, I'm not really tracking numbers because it's not what's important to me personally uh, for both me and my channel and for my mental health. I'm not in a race with myself or anyone else. And so whether I do three pages or 30, it doesn't matter. It's not something that I'm going to track uh, just because for me, it's not important for what I want this hobby to be for. I really just like being able to just pull a book off the shelf, do some coloring, kind of unwind, maybe watch someone in color tube or journaling or recently makeup tutorials <laughs> and just relax at the end of the day because I do a lot of coloring after my work shift. And so just if, if you are part of the coloring book community, I know it's exciting to have big numbers. I know the book community also has that, where it's exciting to say, oh, I read 15 books this month or, or whatever it is. But I think for both a personal standpoint and even for your viewers, what I want is to enjoy it. And what I want for you is to enjoy it. So I, I get slumps, I, I do, but I, I'd hate for you guys to, and I'm just speaking from one content creator <laughs> to another, uh, to get burned out on something that you truly love and enjoy. Because they're just with everything that's going on. You know, you might find other things to do. I certainly do. But I'd hate for this hobby to become work. It can be work for me at least, when I'm just trying to make a page fit to the vision that I have or a semblance of a vision because sometimes I don't know what I'm doing but I'd hate for it to be oh I have to color because I need to get a video out or I need content or I didn't do that many pages I'd, I'd hate for that for you guys and so yeah I just I, I wanted to talk about that because I've seen probably for the last few months anyway where people are like oh I only did well no yes that's that's a lot <laughs> congratulations and you should never compare yourself to anyone else but also to your past self maybe you had more time uh maybe it helped you work through something i don't know but it, it shouldn't be oh i only did it's like oh my god guys i did 25 pages i did two pages i did 800 pages it it should be more of the accomplishment of what you've done versus the regret of what you didn't does that make sense okay <laughs> So I don't know how many books I've worked in. Um, you'll see uh, as we go along. <laughs> but I, again, it's not something I count. So 
I, I couldn't tell you right offhand. Uh, but we're going to start with this. This is a new purchase for May. Oh, um, before I get too into it, the last few books I'm going to show you are going to be my butter, my buddy colors. I always want to say butter colors. Let's just call it butter colors uh, with Emma, Erica, and Poet Spice all here on YouTube. I will link their channels below. And it, guys. I'm saving it for last because, yeah. So we <laughs> get back to this one, A World Within World by Kirby Rosanis. I was on the fence about buying any Kirby Rosanis books because I know they're double-sided. And because they're so intricate, I thought I would just tack them like I do my mythographic books, which I do predominantly in alcohol markers. You can't do that in here or you're going to ruin the back page. However, this is the page that I did. And I have to say, I, I quite enjoy this book and I do um, look forward to working in them. You guys know I like to do a little bit of journaling. I know that's not for everyone. For me, it just gives me sort of a frame of reference of what I've done within a month, but also what I use if I ever wanted to recreate this. Uh, but this was a combination of um, Faber-Castell Abertura water pencils, and that's mostly in the sky, a little bit in the water. This is all Tombos. That's Tombow there. I did use my Brute Funer pencils, the square ones, as well as some mild liners just here and there. And then I don't know if you guys can see it. They're in the whites of the waves. I used this. This is the Mythical Unicorn Shimmer Finish from Mondalama. I did pick this up in Target. And I'm not a huge fan of acrylic paint. So the only two acrylic paints I have <laughs> are these two right here. But I love that this is sheer. It's not as opaque as this one. And so I can have a little bit of color and shimmer peek through. And then what I did here is just go back over top of it with some black because it does dull out the black line art. And I really like how this page came out. Now, I don't know why I thought this as cherry blossoms. It does pull a little Asian to me, but more so I thought those would be really pretty in pink. And then I just sort of worked my way backwards from that. But I did finish that actually just right before I did this video. And I like that there's different textures and different mediums, and there's quite a few layers of Tombos on here. So that's quite a few layers of a water-based ink. And even though there is a little bit of buckling, there's absolutely no bleed through. I hope you guys can see that. And so I really, really like how this paper works. It works well with the pencil, it works well with the water base, it works well with the watercolor pencils. And so I am I am quite interested in, in this book. What is a little overwhelming, it's not intimidating. There's only one book that I'm intimidated. It's that uh, George Tufexis Spectacular Spring Coloring Number. That's the only one that intimidates me because even though it literally tells you what to do, I just don't know where to start. Um, but most or a lot of the spreads in here are double page spreads. And so it does make it a little bit overwhelming and I don't like having a lot of whips. And so I might need to just bite the bullet and have ongoing whips. Maybe just focus on one double page spread versus trying to do all the single um, picture pages and then having a book left over of double page spreads just because it's it's so overwhelming to me but yeah that is world within worlds by kirby rosanis okay i did a picture in here uh, which is lulu mayo's a million cute animals and it was this one right here. I think that is a red panda, at least that's what I think it is. Uh, when I saw the flowers, I did see cherry blossoms. I'm not sure why. <laughs> the birds were just basically, so they all started off as or orange. Um, at first I thought they were penguins, but then they have floofy things and cheeks and like, wait, what? And so I did them all orange and then I added color. And so now they look like that. Overall though, I'm happy with this. I did do this in a satin glazing medium. And most of this is done with the Faber-Castell Abertura pencils, but I did add some of that acrylic 
this one here to the whites of the waves again i do look like i do love how that looks um, in some aspects because it just adds a little bit of shimmer and color i should have gone over and uh, redid the black inking but I, I didn't think about that there's some white jelly roll pens in here some mild liners but mostly it's just a wash of the Albert Durrell pencils and it's the first time that I used them this month and so definitely was a learning curve and I'll talk actually a little bit more about that when we get to my butter colors yeah I know it's buddy colors but those words just kind of stream together and that was Lulu Mayo's a million cute animals this is a recent purchase I actually will need to mark this there's a few of them I'll need to mark I think including the curvy one uh, that I received this month I did pick this up because um Emma Colors did a flip through and I'm like oh fine I'll get it so this is Josh Lee's fantasy collection and this is the picture I did here. Now the paper is, it's definitely Amazon paper. And some of the pictures, the line art is both strong and yet a little blurry. I don't know if that's the intent. I don't know if it was copied wrong. I'm not sure, but yeah. I mean, it's really interesting images. And I like that they're, some of them are quite different. Um, I was watching a video by Danny Buttons recently, and she said, when you get a new coloring book, you may not want to start with your favorite picture. My favorite picture in here is this one right here. I find this picture very striking. And so I immediately wanted to do this. I'm like, no, she's right. Don't do your favorite picture because if for whatever reason you mess it up, you may not want to come back in here because <laughs> then you'll just be sad every time you think about it. And so there's actually not a lot of pictures I don't like. In fact, I can't think of one that I don't like, but I liked her. She's sitting in a tree somewhere and she looks a little sad. This actually was more detailed by way of what's going on in the background. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I just colored that through because I, I didn't understand what it was, and so I just made it part of the night sky. She is looking both resigned but resolved, like, you know, whatever is coming down her way, she's going to deal with it, even though she may not want to. A lot of this and the smell is bothering me. <laughs> a lot of this was done with Sharpie pens. If you've been wanting to try out alcohol markers, but you either have no access or you don't really know if you want to um, invest in that kind of, because they can be a little pricey, then you can get very similar results by way of blendability, by way of Sharpie pens. And I think that's why people in the coloring community use them. Now there is a smell and I'm pretty sure it's the Sharpie. It could be the paper of the coloring book. I'm not sure, but it's not so hideous that I can't work in here. But yeah, it's definitely like, oh yeah, there's that smell. I did want to see how my brute finish worked in here. I will need to do another page and try my Prismas, but I think they work well. With the alcohol markers, you get a nice, flat, very non-streaky, or at least definitely not as streaky as a water-based pencil or pen, um, but at least the way that I color, you can definitely see a lot of the white peeking through. I didn't uh, burnish it, and I generally don't for most things. The paper is quite thin. So I don't know if you can see it, but you can actually see the line art of the picture in front of it. However, because they are single-sided, so long as you put something in between, uh, you're not going to get any sort of bleed through because, I mean, it doesn't matter what the, the back of the page looks like. Although using both alcohol and Sharpie markers, I actually do really like how that looks. I always have. But that is Josh, Josh Lee's Fantasy Collection. Thank you, Emma, for doing the flip through of this. I mean, my budget doesn't thank you, but I certainly do. The next book is Woodland Mandalas by Vania McArdle. And this was just finishing up a whip. Not a huge fan of how this turned out, but it is finished. 
And for me, that was the most important part. I wasn't sure what to do with the mushrooms. I, I've said this before. When I see a mushroom, I always think a red mushroom, even though I don't, I'm pretty sure I've never eaten a <laughs> red mushroom. And so I just, I purposely decided to leave that blank. I purposely decided to leave the rainbow blank and just focus on this right here. It's very symmetrical and I'm okay with that. And I believe this was also done uh, predominantly in Sharpies. I had started off with Crayolas, decided I didn't like it, and then just finished with the Sharpies. So you can tell that by the back here. And that is Willen Mandala's by Finia McArdle. The next book is by Heidi Hornsby. She has a YouTube channel. She is a small independent artist and this is her Tortured Tales. And the one that I've done is this one right here, which is Little Red Riding Hood. And this was done all in Ohuhu's. Actually, I did a lot of this with the skin tone Ohuhu's. And then I brought in my regular ones for the blues and the greens. And I I really like how this picture came out and like I've mentioned before this is probably one of the books that I'd like to complete a picture every single month and I don't know I mean I've looked through this but I did not realize oh I didn't realize until later that I didn't put a blocking sheet but that's fixable but I did not realize that there is a Moana picture in here I mean I've had this book for a few months now Oh. Right there. <laughs> There's Hey Hey. And I forgot the pig's name. And that thing that sings to her that wants to eat her. I forgot that name too. But yeah, this is probably going to be the next picture <laughs> that I work on for June. But this is Heidi's Tortured Tales. And you can find this on Amazon. If any of these I can find on Amazon, I will link them below. Just to make it easy for you guys if you are interested in purchasing. This is Kira Shershneva's Women's World. It is a color by colors. I did do pictures two pictures in here. Now this one was a buddy color with Emma colors. It's the first one that we had agreed to do together. Um, although this back portion was supposed to be the dark green, I liked how it looked with the white and so I left it. And because of that, both of our pictures actually look quite different even though it's a color by color. Um, so I really like how she came out. Emma and I also did another one and that's uh, one of the ones I'll be talking about in just a little bit. But then I'm also doing, whenever I can, Olga Ronnie's and she has a YouTube channel um, here on YouTube and I'll, I'll link it below. She does a weekly coloring challenge. It's hashtag find and color. And so what she'll do is she'll pull a little prompt from her box of prompts. And then if you want to participate, uh, you would just find a coloring page or two or three or however many you can get done in that week because she puts the video up on Sunday and you have to submit um, your pictures to her by the following Saturday of whatever the prompt is. And so this was prompt number five, which was sunflowers. And it was a little hard for me to find sunflowers in a picture that I thought I can complete in a week. So fortunately, I was able to find this one but I really like that challenge and I will participate as often as I can so long as I can find the picture and I can finish it within a week but yeah this was done in Ohuhu's and this was for Olga Rani's find and color challenge I actually did two in this book, Wondrous Woman by Sassy Coloring. There's actually two channels here on YouTube uh, called Sassy Coloring. One in the British iteration with the U and then one that isn't. So uh, I just want to make that distinction because I searched once. I'm like, wait, where, where are all her books? And then I realized there actually were two different uh, channels, two different ladies all together. This is Saska Cook. Um, I believe she's in Europe somewhere. And then I believe the sassy coloring without the U is based in the U.S. But <laughs> there's a funny story to this first page. So I ordered the skin tone Ohuhu alcohol markers and I put her skin down. I did not do any kind of testing. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so then I put some others down and I figured, you know what? 
this would be a really good page to be my tester page. Now, I actually don't think it looks that bad. I mean, there should be blues and greens in here, but otherwise, this is actually all of the colors in the skin tone Ohuhu markers. Now, for whatever reason, I was able to get those from Amazon. If I try to buy other sets of alcohol markers, it says that it won't ship to my location. I live in Hawaii, so it's weird, but I actually will be using this and have used this in the next page uh, to see what color skin tone do I want to use. Um, I don't swatch any of my products because I have a variety of different pages with a variety of different paper quality color and weight and for me it doesn't make sense to swatch it for every single product that I do because if I swatch on this paper it doesn't necessarily tell me what the color will be on another paper so that's that's why I don't swatch anything by way of pencils by way of pens but because this started out as oh that's not what I was expecting because uh, I, I rely on the pen cover now I will always have this one to uh, give me an idea of how I want to use my colors in the future but I did do another one let me take this off and that's this one right here and I, I really do, it's not just laziness, but I really do like leaving the backgrounds sort of neutral so that you focus on the girl. Now, I still struggle with getting the Ohuhu markers down and an even so you can see that there is some discoloration there. And I also struggle on how to do hair because I know, you know, you see a lot of people here on YouTube who can do the highlights and I like that look. I just, yeah. I don't know how to do that and I'm too lazy to look into it <laughs> so I'll just bemoan it every single month and I'll just be that girl but those are the two pages that I did in here and this is another one that they are rather simple and quick coloring and so I'd like to do at least one page in here every single month but that is Sassy Coloring Wondrous Woman and I believe this is by Saska Cook and this is definitely on Amazon that's where I purchase it and I will link it below this is David Peterson's Mouse Guard coloring book. I did do one page of here. And this is actually the introduction for me uh, to Olga's, um, Olga Rani's Find and Color Challenge on a weekly basis. Um, the challenge, I believe this was number three. Yeah, number three was Snail. And so I looked through all of my coloring books. I actually did find some other snails in other pages that I thought I could get done as well. But I like that this one was a little bit more prominent than some of the others, because usually they're just really small. And so this was all done in Brute Fooners. Uh, and I really liked how this came out. I took a lot of time with this right here. And I just, I actually really enjoy this coloring book. I haven't done another picture in here because I've actually uh, worked on some other things. But if I can, this is another one I'd like to get into um, on a monthly basis. Everyone has time constraints, as do I, and so we'll see. But I do love the images, and it looks like I've done a lot more work than I actually have because there is quite a bit of grayscale on here. So even though there is a little bit of layering of, of colors, um, really is what's driving the point home on this is the actual artwork, and then you don't have to do as much to it as you might with another picture. But this is The Mouse Guard by David Peterson. This is Winged Beauty. This is a compilation of five different artists. And I actually had originally only done this one. I did this uh, predominantly with Albrechter. I had started out with my Brute Fooners, the square pencils, um, but I liked um, playing around with the watercolors. It does warp the page, but it did not bleed through. So I'm very happy about that. She seemed to me like Mother Nature, and that's why I chose the colors. Uh, that's why her skin is more green. And then I liked how the woods and the sky kind of just fade in the background. I didn't pay too much attention to the animals because she really is the focus of the picture for me and I did finish that this month but then last night yeah last night I finished this one and that's because that is a prompt for number six for Olga Ronnie's um, hashtag find in color uh, if you want to participate uh, you can either post on Instagram and then it's just a post 
or you can email her your picture and she'll actually feature it in um, her video when she shows her completed page. And this is all done in Albrecht Durer. And then there is a little bit of Wink Costella on the fairy wings. And there's some Jelly Roll Metallic uh, right there and right there. I don't know if it's showing on camera. Now, I really want to get more Albrecht Durer pencils from Faber Castell. I do have the 24 pack. Um, I'm okay with his skin, but I don't have a lot of skin tones. That set does not have pink, <laughs> and I don't have the skills to make pink or make a cream, and they don't have that. So I want to get more colors. Uh, just because I don't have the skills on how to make skin tone and I really wanted to, this to be predominantly that pencil there but I am still quite quite happy on how this came out and then I added a quote here because there was this empty white space it's from William Butler Yeats and it says come fairies take me out of this dull world for I would ride with you upon the wind and dance upon the mountains like a flame and I just I love how strong he is and the prompt was beard. <laughs> so it was either this one or, and it still might be, uh, there is a picture in my fairy tales book of Captain Hook, or if you have coloring books with gnomes in it, then that will work as well. But yeah, that's why I have two in here because this is actually gonna fulfill the prompt for this week. This is actually due no later than um, like June, 4th, June 5th, whatever the Saturday is. So we'll need to take a picture of this and send this to her. But I really like how that came out. And that is Winged Beauty, a fairy coloring book. Um, I did purchase this from my friend Susie. Go ahead and check out her uh, Facebook page. I'll link it below. But this is from Fairy Magazine. Again, it's a compilation of five different artists. And it's really fun, great paper. This is uh, Opal's Moments Holy for Yourself. This is the number three of the Forest Girls. That's how I look at this book. And I did one page in here. You guys know I want to do one page in an Opal book every single month. Now this was also done all in Albrecht Durer and because it is limited colors um, and I have not played around with them a lot. I mean, I did this month because they're new to me, uh, but this was all done in watercolor pencils. And so I did put the color down, used a little bit of water, and then for like the trees, I went back with the pencils over top and did not wash them out. And I like the effect of that because it does give you a little bit of tone. As a color pencil, they work fantastically. As a watercolor pencil, well, I don't know if they work fantastically because I have nothing else to compare them to, but they do give you a lot of pigment uh, payoff, and I, I really enjoy that. Now, I don't know that I'll be doing a lot of watercolor in here because I do like being able to get a little bit more pigment, a little bit more control like I did with this one on my pages. Um, and so it's probably just going to be predominantly a pencil book for me. But I did like testing this out and I did not coat the paper. If you do coat in the glazing liquid, um, it actually changes the components of the paper and so you can actually get a different finish off of it. But I like that I tested it. I like that I went a little bit out of my comfort zone. And so that's my completed page for um, Opal's Moments Holy for Yourself. This is Erie's Tracing book. I think it's like tracing around the world. It's in Japanese. So let's see if there's a title page. And there is not. But I, I think that's what it is, tracing around the world. And the page I did was this one. Now, what I had done originally was I inked it in black. So this is what the page looks like generally. So they are very faint like this. And I plan to just ink them, um, the backgrounds or ink the outlines with one of my Pigra Microns. Now I don't necessarily need to use this pen because I don't know that I'll be using any water mediums in here, but I like the thickness of this. I'll either use the 01 or the 03 and then I had started off with the frame and then I did the quill and I had four root funers. It's 20, 24, 93, and 117. And I loved how this 
looked. And so I basically just did the page in the, those four colors. And you guys, I'm not gonna lie, I love the outlining that was very relaxing to me. And I'm probably going to, if I can, do a very limited color palette for this entire book. I think that's so striking. And it does make it challenging because the flowers and the leaves and whatnot. But I don't know, it's a very sepia looking picture. Now maybe I can't pull it off with all um, color tones, but I'm certainly going to try because I'm not gonna lie, this is one of my favorite pictures that I have done ever. I've only been coloring or rediscovering coloring since January of this year, but there's just something about this that is just fun. In fact, I had done the outline on the 22nd, but all of the coloring was done. It says the 31st because I, I started around midnight and then I finished around 2.30 this morning because it's currently the 31st when I'm filming this and it was just it was so much fun I loved I, I love how there's different tones and this looks like an old you know sun drenched wall that you can definitely see that there are different elements but it just it looks like one of those filters where you can do the sepia tone or the blue tone or the grayscale and i just i love how this looks guys you, you don't even know how happy this makes me and i wrote the colors down because even though this is the eiffel tower and you think more grays and blues and pinks even romantic colors is what i think of i might do this in a sepia tone as well just so that even though they are not a two-page spread, they do still deal with France. And I think that would be so interesting. And I left the background. And I don't know that I will be doing a lot of backgrounds because even though there isn't a lot of color on the page, I think the background actually helps make it pop. It's, it's just so pretty to me, guys. <laughs> and so that is this picture out of Erie's Again, I think it's tracing around the world um, of her tracing book series. This is Eerie's A Second Tale, um, Romantic Country, and I actually finished that work in progress. When I finished this, I wasn't, I mean, I like how it came out. I, sh I should say that, but I thought I made the strawberries too dark based on what was going on with the rest of the page. And so I did these kind of dark and then these sort of amid between those two. So there is this kind of triangle action going on, but I think, I think it actually works out because having not seen this for a few weeks, because I finished this on May 21st, I actually am quite happy with it. I like how I did her wings. Uh, the pencil it was done in Brute Funers, and then I don't know if you can see it, but let's see. I used Wink of Stella on the wings, and I used Wink of Stella in these little white things back here. And so I really like how that came out. I've got some metallic jelly roll pens in these flowers here. And then I did use the Black Widow skin uh, for her skin there. I'm glad that this page is done, but I'm also actually quite happy on how it came out. I think that's a really pretty picture. Again, I guess it's one of those things when you've just finished it and you've been looking at it for a while, you're like, oh, I would have done that differently or that differently. But coming back to it after a couple of weeks, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with this. Not going to lie. And I do like how she's, she's shimmering. <laughs> I really like that a lot. And so that is a second tale from Erie's Romantic Country. The next one is from Joanna Basford's World of Wonder, and this also was a whip that I finished, and that was this one right here. I actually finished this last night. Um, I did quite a bit of finishing of various pictures last night, and again, uh, this is predominantly brute funners for the pencil work, and then I did do some basing in Tombows and mild liners, and I really like how this came out. I like how the house looks. I even like how the bird looks in the 
there's only three colors um, on top of the base of Tombow and I just I think it's really pretty um, if you guys didn't know what's in the original picture is the house the pots and the bird I framed it out in the diamond I added the tree I added the pebble path and the horizon because I just wanted to anchor the page and I thought this tree this is what I based it off of and so these two pages kind of tie together but if you have this book you're not going to see those components you're not going to see the frame and in fact uh, for quite a few of these I might do the same I've seen a lot of pictures where they've done a skyline but if there are pictures where they're just floating in space I might do the same where I sort of frame it out or put something in it so that it anchors the page because I'm not going to lie, I don't really like doing a lot of backgrounds and I find if I can do something like that where really hones your eye onto it, then it just makes it easier for me so that all of this white space seems purposeful and this really is the focus of the picture. But yeah, I liked working on this and I think the Brute Funners on top of a marker base work really well in this book. And that is Joanna Basford's World of Wonders or Worlds of wonder. The next book I worked out of was Joanna Basford's Ivy and Inky. This is something I did also purchase from Susie's Cottage and I like it because I could have ordered this off of Amazon but this is the British version <laughs> so it's got the U in it. It's the same book it's just I, I like that. And so the first page I actually did was the title page and yes we share the same name. In fact I think I'm older so I had it first <laughs> and I did this predominantly in Brute Funers, there is some metallic gel pen. It says metallic gel orange. I don't know where that is exactly because I also use stickles on here. Um, so I don't know if you can see the shimmer, but I think that's really pretty. And then the other page I did in here, again, was for Olga Ronnie's Finding Color Challenge. And the prompt for that week, number four, was pearls. And so I found this page, it's very monochrome, it's only blues and grays. And I did, I tried to make this look like some tutorials I had seen. The problem I was finding is those were done with round pearls, these are drop pearls, and I didn't know exactly how the light should hit it. I like how this looks, it's just, yeah, some of them are, are better attempts than others, but I did put some, is that wink? No, this is stickles. The Wink of Stella doesn't isn't as textured as this, and I can feel it, but I don't know if you guys can see the sparkle. It definitely looks better in person than it did in the picture that I sent to her. I think this one is the best rendition out of all of them, but I really liked how this page came out. And just like the other page that I did in the Eerie book, I wrote down the colors that I used just in case I want to replicate that on this page just to make them a little bit more cohesive. Some people who do this book have a theme of their colors they want to use. I just treat each individual as its own thing. So this I'll treat as one page, but then it doesn't mean the next time I see a bee, I'll treat it the same. They're just individual by way of what I see on a two page spread. And I think that's more um, coming from like a planner journal type of world versus the coloring book world. Cause I know a lot of people like to keep their things cohesive. Each, each two page spread is a new opportunity for new things for me. So that was Joanna Basford's Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. Now we're getting into the buddy colors. And so this is where there's some story time because um, I had set up Buddy Colors with Emma and Erica, and I'll link their channels below, um, prior to the month of May, probably in the very last week of April. And so Emma and I had decided to do a picture out of Luna from Maria Trolle, and then Erica and I decided to do a two-page spread because she is doing Mermaid uh, from an eerie book, and I'll show that after this one. And so I got the genius idea to do my buddy colors with Erica and Emma in satin glazing medium. I'd seen a video from Coloring with Kay, and let me just be very clear, her video is amazing. 
but I'd recommend that you pay attention because I watched the video the very first time doing something else. And so when I prepped the pages, got that, no problem. I didn't understand what it was going to do to the page. Again, that's all me because I didn't pay attention. I understand now and I'll definitely do it again. Just it was a little jarring for me. And let, let me show you what I mean. So this is the picture that I did with Emma. And what that satin glazing medium does, it changes the texture of the paper. And so I don't know if you guys can see it, but I used a foam brush to put the medium on. There are lines that I cannot get out because it is on the texture of the paper. It changes the quality of the pencils. It changes the quality of the pens. And I started off with the water. I've realized this month, I don't like doing water. I also don't like doing butterflies, but that's a different thing. Um, because I had played around with the Albert Durer. Again, I didn't test out any of these things prior to doing this. I just went all in and like, yeah, it should be fine. I saw a video, sort of, not really. Um, and so it got to a point with this one and the one that I did with Erica, where I was seriously considering just going back on Amazon and Amazon Japan and buying new books and starting over again, because I felt so defeated by something I didn't understand how to work. I definitely have a better appreciation for it. I don't know that I'm ever going to do the glazing medium in books that have decent paper. There's actually really no reason to. That trick is definitely, I think, good if you wanted to, and, and it makes more sense in the next one I'll show you, uh, change Amazon printed paper, because then, yeah, you definitely get uh, a lot more pigment payoff if you do it to a create space paper, but, I don't know that I'll be working in a lot of water mediums and that technique is really for water mediums. It's not really designed for color pencils. Now, a lot of this is color pencils, but it will eat them up like you would not believe. In fact, I used a lot of Amazon Basic pencils on here. I was about to chuck those Amazon Basics out because they don't give me a lot of pigment. But when you texturize the page with that glazing medium, all of a sudden you get tons of pigment. And so if I'm going to do that technique again, and I probably will, that's what I'll use those pencils for because otherwise you have to layer too much to get pigment and I don't like that. But I am really happy on how it came out. The water is what it is. It's, it's not horrible, but it's not great. Uh, Emma doesn't like her water, but her water to me, and definitely go check out her completed pages video, it looks so magical. Like if you drink it, you'll you'll have, you know, like a superhero power or something. <laughs> she says it's toxic waste, but I don't know. I think it's beautiful. The sky was a mistake. I had based it in my yellow Tombow. I had gone to the next layer with some pink. For some reason, I thought it would give like a nice orange, but it gave that color. I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's what we're doing now. Um, and because there was a gradation of color, but it also looked a little flat, I went in with some Posca pen to give some clouds. So I, I had no plan for this page. And the only reason he's in red is because I wanted him to pop. And if he wore blue, he would have receded too much. Yeah. <laughs> so this whole page was just an endeavor of, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Oh, well, that's not so bad. I don't, I don't mind that so much. And it, it is one of my favorites now, but it was a very, it was a very hard process for me. And I don't know if it was because I was setting up with a buddy color that I didn't want to disappoint my buddy, but also if I was trying to self-sabotage myself by, you know, trying all the new things without ever having tested them. I don't know if that was just on me. But yeah, that's my page that I did with Emma Colors. I like to write notes on here. I know, again, I've mentioned this. People don't like to do that, but I like to see what it is I did. And I don't know that I'm ever going to forget that I did this as a buddy color. <laughs> but I also like writing that down because it is significant. And she is the very first person uh, that I asked. Um, and she has just been so amazing and gracious. So definitely check out her channel. She's fantastical. So, oh, and because I paint my nails red and I'm not 
very cognizant of what my hands are doing unless I'm coloring. That's why these marks are here because that's my nail polish. What are you gonna do? But that is Luna by Maria Trolle. The next buddy color I did was in Eerie's Romantic Tale, The Third Tale, or Romantic Country, The Third Tale. And this is the one, again, I did with Erica and I wanted to buy a new book because I, I'm not gonna lie, I love how this looks now. I love how this looks now. But I glaze it with the satin glazing medium. Let me show you what that is. It's this right here. So it says it's for slow drying extender for acrylic colors. I knew I wasn't going to use acrylic in here. And again, because I had half watched a video, I'm like, yeah, 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 it's for the, it's for the water color. It changes the thing of the something. Uh-huh, okay. So this is from Amazon in Japan. And I seriously, seriously considered buying a new one because when I did the water, I did not like how that came out. Again, I did a lot of water this month. I'm not a fan of water. I have realized that now. Um, and then I couldn't get a lot of uh, color on the rocks, but because the paper is texturized, it actually gives it a pretty cool effect. Uh, it texturized the skin, so I couldn't get a very a seamless color down, but it wasn't until I did the flowers that I understood the phenomenal power that that glazing medium does because there are so many layers of water-based tents. These are all done in Tombows, but there was no pilling and it moved like water, it moved like paint. So I used my Tombows and the whatever this is, the blender pen to get some of these effects. And guys, if I had not discovered that, because at that point I'm like, uh, I can't ruin this anymore. Um, but if I had not discovered that, I would have hated this technique. But because of that, it treats them, it treats them even better than a watercolor pencil or watercolor pen or watercolor in general. What, what am I trying to say? Um, because it stays fluid. So it, it is almost like, it's almost like a water color that has acrylic paint properties where you can move it, you can reactivate it. You've got the vibrancy of the color, but you also got some transparency knowing that it's a water-based. And I just, I love how these flowers look and I don't plan. I knew the water would be blue. I knew the rocks would be gray. And then the, the buildings are that color because I didn't want anything to detract from the water or the flowers. And so it, it was another one of those 80% in, I hated it. And then it just all seemed to come together. Now this is the first two page spread that I've done. And because of that, I don't know that I'm looking forward to doing another two page spread. <laughs> it was a lot of work, but it's also, to me, I, I can still feel the, this is just horrible. It's horrible. I ruined it. And it more so because I was doing a buddy color. I'm like, oh, I messed it up. And Erica's going to be mad, even though why would she be? It's my book. But yeah, there is some stickles on the page. You can tell it's very heavily textured. Um, I did their tails in Jelly Roll Metallic Ink. Stickles right there. And it's just... And Erica's page, I mean, it's the exact same page, and yet it's much more muted. It's much more elegant to me. Even Ara, uh, even Emma's page in the Luna book, it just seems more elegant to me. Um, but I love that we both have the same base, and then we just did such different things with it. So yeah, I would I would definitely recommend watching Kay's video thoroughly, twice no distractions because I went back and I watched it. I'm like, Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't really get that part. <laughs> so it's not, it's nothing yet on K. It absolutely was just my own. Yeah. 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 I saw the thing. She did the thing. It's, it's easy. You just do the thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I really, really, really liked how this came out. 
That was a mistake though. I wanted her to be blonde. The tomboy I used made it orange. It was too close to her hair, but then I couldn't get a darker color on. So yeah, sorry, sweetie. But he doesn't mind. Why would he? She's a mermaid. But that is uh, my buddy color with Erica of Elm Colors. It is predominantly done well, no, there's a good mixture of Tombos, Brute Fooners, and Albrecht Durer pencils in here. The sky was definitely done with Albrecht Durer and some, what is the white? I don't know what the white is. There's no texture, so I don't think it's Posca. I think it was the white paint out of the Albrecht Durer or the white pencil. But yeah, that's that one there. So I'm happy to announce I did not buy another book. I just... I dealt with the one that I had and I, I'm, I'm glad I did. I'm, I'm glad I didn't uh, cop to the fear and try to cover my mistake. So that was my buddy color in Romantic Country, A Third Tale by Erie. And so the final book, I actually did two in here and I did uh, these as buddy colors with Poet Spice. Uh, this first page, oh, I'm sorry. This is Mythographic Odyssey by Joseph Kantenbong. And I wanna say that the pre-order that I did is from him Maybe it's Fabiana. I don't know, but I did pre-order from Amazon. And so this is the first one that we did. And you guys, her page is phenomenal. Now I'm not comparing our, our pages. No, um, that's a lie, I totally am. But I did not go in with the plan and I should have. I liked how I did this here, but I think this might have been better um, either as green or maybe as red, but because I don't plan my pages out, um, I just sort of, okay, well, let's let's try this and, and let's try this. The only thing I knew I wanted was I wanted the eyes of the skulls to glow. And so I just used a yellow highlighter for that. And then I just sort of built outward from that because I didn't want to detract from those colors there. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a wink of Stella on all Oh no, there's only a wink of Stella on this guy here, this guy here, and a little bit on here. I actually don't see it on the others, but I wanted them to recede. I don't actually like skulls, um, but yeah, hers, oh, it is so beautiful. Now this is not bad and I had fun with it, but yeah. I, I definitely, if I were to do this again, I think I would make it actually more reds and blues than purples. I don't work a lot with purples. And so, yeah, I'm not entirely happy with it, but I'm, I'm glad that I did it. I'm so happy that Poet Spice and I um, did this buddy color. I think we're gonna do another one because she also pre-ordered the new Mythographic. So once we get it, then we'll, we'll set that up, I think. I just realized I missed a candle. No, I didn't. It was meant to be white. <laughs> well, that's the first one. So uh, if I gave myself a rating, it'd be like a B, B plus. I mean, it's not, it's not bad, but it's, it's not my favorite. But this one, guys, I love this page. And this was another one of those, and I kept it towards the end because of that. I didn't glaze this. Uh, this is single-sided paper, so I use my alcohol markers, but I hated it for about 60% of it because one, I ran out of my gray alcohol marker. Um, and two, this one was a little confusing for me because I didn't know what belonged to what. And so it took a lot longer than these generally do. I wanted him to be a phoenix, but instead of the phoenix dying and rising in the ashes to just another phoenix, I wanted him to choose his own rebirth. And so instead of uh, turning into what he was before, he has made himself into this. So you see what he was and you see what he is. And I just love the dynamic of that. I did add some gray metallic gel pen to this sort of cyborg wing, but it wasn't until I put this teal background 
because everything else pretty much at that time was done, that this just clicked for me. I don't know why, but it seems very Asian. I think it's the combination of the teal and the pink. I've been doing everything, it seems, a very cherry blossom inspired and because of that I did not do any shading with the wood it's very flat I wanted him to be a focus these birds here are just heralding that the phoenix rediscovered or phoenix rebirth or whatever this is is here so you see him you see the flowers and you see the background and then you kind of see the birds and the hidden objects in here I actually left because they made sense in this picture that there that there the clock there that makes sense but I just love how this page looks and it's only ohuhu and the silver jelly roll I don't generally do a lot if any, shading, and if I do, it's going to be with other alcohol markers, uh, but I don't do any pencil work on top of this. I just, I just love this page. Now, this page that Poet Spice did, she did it in blues and browns, and holy moly, it is elegant and gorgeous, just like her other one. Um, the one that she did here actually is a lot of these colors. No, it's a lot of these colors, not so much the teal, but the oranges and the reds and like the like the burgundies. And it's just, it is stunning. It is elegance personified to me. And again, I'm not comparing my work to her, but I just love seeing what people can do with the same products. It's even more so than in the planner community with stickers, because after a while, a lot of the pages just look the same to me. I know it's horrible to say, but it, it does, especially if you're using the same planners, the same sticker books. Coloring books, it is endless, endless possibility. Because even if we're using the same products, we may not choose the same colors. Even if we said, okay, we're gonna do a five color challenge, we not, may not place the same five colors in the same places. It's just, it's wild to me. It's a long video, I know, but uh, again, I don't, I didn't count how many books this was. I didn't count how many pages it was. It's not important to me. It's not something that I track, but I, I colored a lot because it's my go-to after work. Um, uh, I did do a little bit of my journaling. I'll talk about that in a different video, but coloring really has been a great distraction for me, even when I set myself up for stress. But then I do that in my planner and my journals, so that's not a new phenomenon <laughs> for me. But I hope you guys liked this video. Definitely leave me a comment below if you had a favorite picture in the bunch. And yeah, it just, I have not lost my mojo to color. And because I have so many books now, it's, it's, it's close to 50, I think. Um, I just, it's all unlimited possibility, and I love that. All right, guys, well, that's it for me for now, and as always, aloha.